This is a short video on setting up Jamovi. Um, so I'm really going to cover what the different variable types are and the basic setup, um, some features that I think are useful. So in this first video, I'm just going to enter some fake data just to just to show you what I'm doing. Um, this is version 2.3.28, which is right there. And you can see that the basic Jamovi setup uh, looks very similar when you open it. Looks very similar to Excel or spreadsheet, um, SPSS data view, things like that. So this should feel pretty familiar to some of you. Now, um, like SPSS, you have a header row here and that should be your variable names. Um, and so you do not want to put your variable names in this top row. Uh, each row is typically going to be um, a participant in our case in psychology. Um, and so uh, that might be that might be different depending on how you're setting up your data. But for most purposes in in this class in this class, we're going to talk about a row as a single participant. Um, so first of all, uh, you can get to editing your data different ways, you can double click on the variable that you want to edit. So I could double click where it says A and it has these little circles right there. Um, so the little circles indicate that it's set up as a nominal variable. Um, so you do need to be familiar with levels of measurement when you're setting up your data. So I'm gonna double click there. And you can see that there's a space for a name here. So this is where you put your name. There shouldn't be any spaces. Place to put a description, um, your level of measurement, this is one of the reasons why levels of measurement matter and why I won't let you forget them. Uh, data type. So it's it's going to automatically determine this, but sometimes it will do it wrong and you need to make sure that it's correct or you will have some problems. Um, you can also add levels here and um, you, can, uh, you can do a few other things here. Um, so before I get into this, I do want to show you that you can get here from multiple places. So first of all, if I want this to go away, I can click this up arrow to minimize it, to hide it. And you can get there by going to, um, if you're in data, you can go to setup. Same thing. You can arrow over to the different variables, different columns. I could also go to variables and go to edit. Um, so there's different ways to get there, right? So I'm going to stay in data. I'm just going to double click now and I'm going to call this gender. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to use the question here as the description. So this is a, a me habit um, because when I share data, it makes it easy to see exactly what questions were asked for surveys. Um, so this really just depends on, on the type of data that you're using and how much you need to describe there. So I'm going to say with which gender do you most identify? And this, um, you can copy and paste in here, which is handy, um, but I'm gonna go talk about this uh, measurement type. So gender is nominal. There's no innate order to it. There's no numbers naturally. So we're just gonna leave it as nominal. Now you could enter it as integer. Let's say that you have um, already identified the numbers that your um, genders are going to be assigned to, and you're just gonna enter those directly. Typically, if you're entering data manually, it's actually safer to put it in as a text. So you could say um, man, woman, non-binary, oops, can't spell, um, woman, and we'll, we'll do five. So I could do that. And notice that there's a little A there because it's alphanumeric. Um, so that's saying that this is text. I cannot do the same types of analyses on a text variable. Um, so again, kind of rare that you'll be entering it as text. It's, it's um, more likely that you're going to be using data that you're importing from somewhere. Maybe it's from Qualtrics or Google Forms or just an Excel sheet or a CSV or an SPSS file, whatever it is. And what's more likely, I'm going to add this, I'm going to say gender, um, gender text, just so you can see the difference between them. And then this one I'm going to make gender. I'm not going to make it text. So in this case, and let's go ahead, I'm going to copy 
from here. So I'm just going to copy. Um, you, it's easiest to just go ahead and do like control um, copy, control C, and then control V to paste. So I'm going to paste that. And um, I'm going to leave this as nominal because entering it as a number doesn't change its level of measurement. It's still just a category name, but we're going to assign a number for analysis purposes. So I'm going to leave it as an integer here. And I'm going to say um, this is one, uh, two, three, and two, and two. So now notice that I have these levels here. So what I could do is I can say, oh, one is a man, two is a woman, three is non-binary. And you'll notice that you have the same information here represented, but you can, um, it's set up as an integer. And so you can do uh, different analyses, which becomes important later. Uh, so you can also take this and transform it, um, which if you are doing a class with me, I'm making you do. So I'm having you enter things as text so that you can then transform them into um, integers or um, into other, uh, other forms. So that is our um, introduction. So we've done a text variable and we have done an integer nominal variable. So next, uh, let's go ahead and do some scales. So there, I have other videos on how scales in psychology work, um, Likert type scales in particular. So I'm going to use a Likert type scale. Um, this is the social media addiction scale. And this is Zivnuska et al. 2019. Um, so this is a six item scale. And the response options range from um, one, which is never, to always, which is five and then you get a total score of social media addiction. So I'm gonna call this SMA1, this is for item one. Now I could just enter the score, but that's not the optimal way to do that. I could enter the total score. You wanna enter each variable so that you could do reliability analyses or a um, variety of other things. It also keeps you from making mistakes if you're calculating by hand or um, using some other program and then, and then uploading. Uh, so, I'm going to copy and paste because I am efficiently lazy. So we're going to do copy and paste. There's other ways to do this that are more, um, more complicated. But we're not going to do that. Well, it saves time. It's more complicated. So we're going to stick with the basics right now. So I now have my question here. And if I have a single question on a rating scale um, and it has categories that you're putting in order, technically it's ordinal. Um, it's kind of a controversy. You're going to have instructors that uh, will tell you that it's interval, and that's the way that we use it sometimes. But really, a single item is going to be ordinal. So I would set it up as ordinal. It's not going to make a huge difference unless you're doing an analysis that is specific to um, ordinal data. And we'll talk uh, in class, and I have other videos that talk about why it is ordinal and why we treat um, a score, a total score of response uh, items as interval. So I'm going to have ordinal. I'm going to leave it as integer. I'm, I definitely do not want it as text. If I make it text, you're not going to be able to do analyses. It's actually one of the, the biggest issues when you're entering data or setting up your data. Um, you'll be setting it up and you're all happy and everything looks good. And then you try and do your, your, your descriptive statistics and it won't calculate for you correctly. Um, or you're trying to transform your variable and you can't because it's set up as text. So you want to make sure that it's set up as integer um, or decimal if appropriate, right? So this is integer. So um, I'm going to continue to ignore this missing values. We're not going to talk about that um, right now. So my social media addiction scale, it is, um, I'm going to put in my two, three, just to give us all the examples. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And again, I can add labels to this. So I can say never, um, rarely, sometimes. And you can leave the numbers in there if that's helpful for you. So if you want it to show up as like one, well, never, and then one, that's
that's fine too. I don't care. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll do it for the sake of just demonstrating and being consistent here. And then sometimes, often, always. And again, this is ordinal because we have categories. There's not a set space between them. It's not like um, if somebody says uh, never and then um, says rarely on a different question and then sometimes on another one, it's not like it's the same exact amount of use between each of those levels, right? So it is ordinal, technically it is ordinal. I know some of you are going to have teachers that want to fight me about this um, and that's fine. So here, once I click out of it, it's going to save them. I have them here at the bottom. Um, and so you can see that it is set up as integer. And just to demonstrate, if I wanted to go to analysis and I go exploration descriptives, um, I could look at this SMA one and I can go um, look at it here and it's gonna come up with a mean, a median and a standard deviation, minimum, maximum. It's gonna tell me how many are missing and how many values there are. So uh, I can do that because it's a, text variable. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> it's a numeric variable. It is an integer, right? Now, if I do that for gender text, let's actually compare these. So let's look at gender text first. Um, notice that there's no mean, there's no median, there's no standard deviation, minimum or maximum, because it's not a number. So it can't analyze it that way. Uh, now, if I were to go to my gender, just gender, um, which is the uh, one that has um, our labels in there. Notice that it calculates a mean and a median and a standard deviation. That is not what we would use. Um, so I could change that and I could look at frequencies instead. But for now, just know that how you set up the variables is going to affect um, the results that you get. So now we have some information here um, in our little output. All right. Um, so going back to setting this up, um, let's set up another one. So I'm going to set up SMA2. And um, this one, because we've used the first three that they give us, you're now just going to say new data variable. You can also do new computed or new transformed. I'm going to show that in other videos. Um, but I'm just going to say new data variable. And I'm going to call this SMA, oops, SMA2. And I'm going to copy and paste my new question. Um, and I'm going to set it up the same way. So this is ordinal integer. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm and paste. Um, and so again, we have entered some data. So that's all that I really want to show in this video. Um, so there are future videos with more information, more details, and then we'll get more complicated later on. Um, so uh, the last thing I do want to show you, or actually I have two last things I'm going to show you that are that are important for setup. Uh, you can zoom. So there's a variety of uh, information. This, these little three dots right here, if you click on them, you can zoom. So I'm zoomed in a little bit for this video. Um, you can change result formatting. You can also go to syntax mode. So we're not talking about syntax right now, um, but that's basically the um, language that this program uses. And so you can make your life a lot easier if you learn syntax, um, but we're not going to do that right now. So we can always switch. You can also do um, color palette. There's all sorts of um, other things you can do. I have it set to automatically install updates, but that's that right there. And then you should save this. So I'm going to save it. Notice that it has the um, has old files. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna save as, and I'm gonna save this as, um, I'm gonna call it social media addiction. I like to add dates for things. So I would want to have dates for when, um, dates for when I'm making video or not videos, when I'm making, when I'm working on files. So the reason why that can be helpful is that um, Sometimes it's beneficial for you to save any changes that you make so that in case you made a mistake, you can go back to your original data. So let's say that um, tomorrow I open this up 
and I transform some variables um, and I add some additional lines of data. I collect more data and I manually enter it, which again, rare, but you might do it. Um, then I could change it and do 815 uh, 2023. So for this, um, I'm going to save it and then I can open it in the future. So I'm just going to say save. And now it's been saved. You'll notice it's a .omv file. So that is the end of this introductory video. Stay tuned for more videos.